From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. What if fluoride isn't good for us? Sure, it helps our teeth and bones grow, but at what cost? To understand exactly what fluoride is and how it came to permeate our water supply, we'll need to look back through history. Here are the facts. Fluoride is a term used to describe compounds derived from a poisonous gas called fluorine. These substances have many industrial uses and protection of human tooth enamel is not necessarily the most important. Fluoride occurs naturally in some water sources, but the United States did not fluoridate water until the 1940s. Sources report that Russians and Germans fluoridated water first, and not because of dental health. Instead, they believed it promoted passivity and lowered the number of guards needed in gulags and concentration camps. When the U.S. began putting fluoride into the water supply, citizens across the country raised an uproar. This was back when protests used to mean something. But these protests still didn't stop fluoridation. So what happened? Pro-fluoride businesses and government agencies contacted the legendary father of public relations, Edward Bernays. Bernays was the original spin doctor and a nephew of Sigmund Freud's. He had already used his marketing skills to make bacon a symbol of American breakfast. He also proved his metal playing with the dark side of advertising, propaganda, when he orchestrated a PR campaign convincing Americans to support an invasion of Guatemala. Fluoride was just another opinion war. Instead of launching the usual ad campaign, Bernays contacted dental associations and had those dentists plug fluoride to their patients. Soon, fluoride was a matter of public debate. But the debate was uneven. It focused on the oral benefits of fluoride without mentioning its other effects, or even mentioning where fluoride comes from. Scientists paid by the industrial government coalitions only said that fluoride was safe at one part per million. Here's the kicker. After that dosage, fluoride is bad. Very bad. While it can benefit teeth and bones, the potential dangers of this substance may far outweigh the dental perks. Exposure to fluorine can reduce IQ, damage teeth, and cause arthritis. Those brown spots on teeth aren't from not brushing. They may be from brushing too much. Using fluoridated toothpaste and drinking fluoridated water causes a condition called fluorosis. Both critics and supporters of fluoridation agree that fluoride is toxic after a certain threshold. It's potentially fatal. Yet even today, critics of fluoridation are blackballed when they go on the record about fluoride's harmful effects. Is there something your dentist doesn't want you to know? So if it's bad for us, why does it remain in the water supply? Why can't we talk about it in public? Most importantly, where does this fluoride come from? It's industrial waste. The fluoride we use in U.S. water comes from phosphate and aluminum factories. The fluoride in public water was and is not the same pharmaceutical fluoride found in toothpaste. Instead, the hexafluorosilicic acid used in our water system is a byproduct of aluminum factories, fertilizer manufacturing, and atomic bombs. That's correct. The atomic bomb which came into the public eye just as the U.S. fluoridated water nationwide. Coincidence? According to some sources, declassified government correspondence states that the manufacture of atom bombs required millions of tons of fluoride. The government asked A-bomb scientists to generate safety studies that showed fluoride in a favorable light. Officials buried research into fluoride's effects on the central nervous system, despite evidence that these effects were both significant and dangerous. Consider the first on-the-job injuries and lawsuits in the atomic program were for fluoride exposure, not radiation poisoning. Imagine how much more cost-effective mass fluoride use becomes when no agency or business needs to worry about environmentally friendly disposal. Just chuck it into the water supply as a health benefit and avoid millions of dollars worth of safety checks, lawsuits, and disposal fees. If you're a large corporation, it's the deal of a lifetime. Sabotaging critics who won't go along with the scam is more than worth the expense. Here's where it gets crazy. Conspiracy theorists don't stop with the A-bomb. For many researchers, fluoride isn't just an industrial byproduct. It's a first step toward global government and a new world order. Citing wartime accounts of Russian and German water management, some sources believe fluoridation is a scheme to pacify the common man. Researchers compare the overall effect to a lobotomy. Since fluoride collects in the pineal gland and hypothalamus, researchers think fluoride is designed to impair brain function. With a sheepish and docile public, 
the Illuminati will smoothly implement plans for unified world government. No one will care about wars, foreign affairs, or political scandals so long as the television works and the water keeps running. This paints a disturbing portrait of the future. But could it be true? Is there a secret organization slowly eroding our intellect? Or did the mad rush for atomic power birth a backroom deal between the giants of industry and America's military, resulting in a decades-long deception? Have Americans been duped into believing this poisonous fluoride is beneficial? One last note. Japan and most of Europe have banned the practice of fluoridation due to health concerns. The United States is one of the few countries that persist in this practice, as well as the manufacture of nuclear weapons. So why do we fluoridate water? To clean our teeth? To make nuclear bombs? Or is there something they don't want you to know?